Okay, here we go with the dough now. Uh, you're going to take your dough ball and punch it down after it's been punched down and let it rise. If you let it go overnight, like I suggested for flavoring, uh, take it out about an hour before you want to uh, get, go ahead and prepare it. I take the dough and I take off about <clears throat> three quarters of it and then I leave just a little bit of a quarter left as you can see right here okay what we're gonna do here is we're gonna roll this out with a rolling pin we're not gonna knead it and flip it like you do with a thin crust dough just lightly dust a countertop and you're just gonna go ahead and roll it out like this now the pan is was it 12 and a half inches in diameter so you're gonna want it to be a little bit bigger than the pan so you're gonna have some of this dough overhang and you just want to roll it out so it's pretty flat and even. Okay, all right. Not quite there. Got a little more flour here. I'm gonna dust it here a little bit. Get this crap out of the way here. Put the lid back in here like that. Okay. That should do it. Now, I'll take my pan here. This is a two-inch deep pan, and like I said it's twelve. Uh, I think twelve and a half inches in diameter. And you can kind of put it down here like this, and you should have like about an inch and a half, maybe two inches sticking out the sides. That shows you that it's um, wide enough. And you're just going to basically take it and pop it in the pan like this. And put it in here like that. Okay. Now the pan has been greased. I actually just use good old-fashioned butter. Maybe you want to use olive oil or... I don't know, Crisco, so we use Crisco for the dough. Well, actually, I use a little bit of Crisco and a little bit of butter. And it bakes into the crust and makes it very, very tasty. And you're just going to basically, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get this crust, or the dough, all the way up to the edge here, to the walls. You might have to pull it back and stretch it a little bit. All right, but you don't want any gaps, you don't want any air or anything getting trapped underneath there. You want it to go all along the wall like this. Okay. And that's that. I think we're pretty much good to go here. So uh, all the way around here like that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our filling. All right. Okay. So now we're going to add in the filling here for our pie. We're going to do a sausage. I like to use uncooked sausage. And you're going to put this at the very bottom of the pan. Just line it here in the bottom. The heat from the pan. We'll bring it up, and uh, you know the heat from the pan will come up and it'll actually cook the sausage. So there's no worries about eating uncooked sausage. This is uh, just fresh sausage pulled out of the case, and I got from the uh, friendly neighborhood Italian market here in Little Italy. They make a nice, nice sausage. <sighs> Some cases, uh, you can go back into Chicago. Uh, you can actually get a whole layer of sausage if you want and they'd take like just one big glob of sausage and they would just smear it all on the bottom I believe they call it like the media legend I don't know which place does that I don't know if it's just the deep dish pizzas or if they do that for the stuffed as well but that's just a lot of sausage it's like you can't even pick out <laughs> the sausage if you don't want any so <clears throat> there's the sausage I already think that's a good enough amount okay now we're gonna add our cheese now I use a brand here in San Diego um, called Precious. I find it to be the best low moisture part skim uh, mozzarella cheese to use. Um, it's very important because the way that this pizza is going to cook is you're going to have this cheese and it's going to have pretty much no direct contact with uh, any of the heating elements. It's basically going to bake in between here the two pieces of dough. So it behooves you to have like I said, a low moisture um, a mozzarella in here. Mozzarella. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, um, it could become a real mess. Uh, sometimes even the Precious brand has failed me with the cheese not being, well, really low moisture. And what will happen is it will melt and you'll get some of this runoff and some of this real nasty kind of like residue. Now what I'm actually doing in between is I'm actually putting in a couple slices of provolone in there for a little little different little texture little well not texture but flavoring 
Uh, I used to think that was sacrilege, and I see people do that, but um, it's actually very tasty. And that's really all that matters is taste. So we're going to put some more cheese in here. I take a two-pound block, and I basically grate it fresh. Um, that's always been my best luck is to use fresh, freshly grated cheese that I grate myself. And if you want to go maybe order the deli and get yourself a good quality a mozzarella cheese to grate, that's cool if you want. Um, yeah, like I said though, low moisture part skim. And I don't know what they use back in Chicago, but this is what I um, have to use out here in San Diego. And if I'll go like back east and visit family and friends and uh, make these pizzas, I always have to try to find a local brand and it's almost like a gamble. Yeah. Okay, so there's our pizza. The inside is ready to go. It's stuffed. Now we just got to put a layer on top of it. Okay, we have our top layer of dough on here now. As you can see, I got a layer of dough here and a layer of dough there. The top layer of dough is going to be <coughs> um, rolled out thinner. Even though it's smaller, um, you're going to roll it out thinner. I've poked a couple of holes in here. This is going to allow some of the steam to escape. And what I'm doing here is just kind of going around the pie and sort of pushing on these two pieces of dough to kind of stick them together. Okay. And it should be nice and even. I'm going to pull this one little back a little bit. And push down on it just a little bit. You don't want to smush the cheese in there, but I just push down on it a little bit to let some of the um, air escape out of it right now. Poke another hole up over here. Okay. All right. And that's pretty much it for the preparation. Now, I used to use a knife to take it off the edge, and it used to always come out uneven, so I learned this little trick here. And pull it back a little bit so it's like that there 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 then you just take your rolling pin and it gives you a nice even cut ta-da all right and then you just pull off the excess here and there you go it's ready to be uh, thrown in the oven. Now, people put holes in here to allow steam to escape. And I've done it before where you put the tomatoes on and you throw it in the oven. But man, I tell you, I've, I've always had bad experiences with that where I'll get a big bulbous bubble popping up over here and another one over there. So I have to like go and check on the pizza like every five to ten minutes. So what I've been doing is I'll throw this in the oven. They said this is for home, this isn't for the restaurant. I'll throw it in the oven and I'll let it go for like maybe 10 minutes, you know, and melt off some of that cheese and get some of that steam out of there. Then I'll pull it out and then I'll just put my tomatoes on top of it. And we're gonna check on the oven, make sure that it's uh, preheated. It's ready to go, I think so, but uh, I'm gonna throw this in here about 475 degrees for at least 30 minutes or until the crust here is a nice dark uh, amber color. Not black, just a nice dark amber color. All right. Okay, here's our pizza pie done out of the oven. Got a little charred up around here. But that's okay. Um, now here comes the tricky part. I actually have another pizza pan that has a removable bottom. Makes it really easy to take these monstrosities out of these deep pans. Um, however, if it's cooked and it's cooked good enough, you know, and it's a nice solid crust, I got one of these things too for the uh, deep pans. You can take a spatula. This is like one of my barbecue spatulas. It's a little longer. It's made out of metal. And you might end up sort of, uh, you know, breaking the crust a little bit, but that's okay because you're really just trying to get it underneath here and then transferring it to another pan. Ta-da! And then what you're going to do is once it's clean and everything like that, you can go ahead and just cut it up. I mean clean. Did I say clean? And once it's cooled a little bit, you can go ahead and cut it up. I mean, I can cut it up right now. So, let me get ready for the cut. Okay. Okay, so here it is. Done. It's 
cool off just a little bit. I'm going to use one of these pizza cutters here. I've never actually used one of these before. I just got it actually yesterday. But pretty simply, you just kind of cut it on here. Like that. And then go across here. Yeah, like that. Rock it back and forth. And one more over here. I mean, you can cut it in the eighths or sixteenths, whatever you want to do, but there you go. Cheese is oozing out of this bad boy. It looks delicious. And then one match here and one here and whatever. Alright. Maybe another little like that. Okay. Cheese is just oozing out of here. Let me just take a regular spatula. And we'll just turn it here to the camera. This is, well, you can see here the crust is nice and cooked all the way around here. Let's pop this thing out. Whoop! Little bugger sliding. I'm looking at it here. Sausage is cooked all the way through, and it's just oozing, oozing mass amounts of cheese. I've seen other videos where people have put up um, comments about these type of pizzas. You know, people that are used to the thin crust and everything like that. Uh, some guy put a comment there saying, well, they put so much cheese in there to take up the lack of flavor from the tomatoes and the crust. And that could be nothing but further from the truth. Everything about these type of pizzas, this is my favorite type of pizza, the stuffed pizza, is great. I mean, the crust just tastes delicious. Notice, you know, I put a lot of oil, a lot of greasy things in here, but you know, you wipe your hands in here, there's no grease. Everything is baked right into the crust. Um, good quality cheese, so the cheese all melted evenly and everything. And the tomatoes, I mean, just pick off a little piece right here. Delicious. Awesome. And this is my take on uh, Chicago stuffed pizza, because I live out here in San Diego. And there are some places that sell stuffed pizzas, but I don't think they do it right. So I've learned how to make it myself, and... Uh, I haven't had one person sit there and tell me my stuffed pizzas suck. So, uh, follow my recipe, give it a shot. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a nice day. Bye.